Hello everybody and welcome to Truly Heal. After my last email, I sent out the review about all the different frequency devices and energy devices and energy medicine. I probably created more confusion because I had so many emails coming back asking me about more specific details that I thought before I confuse everybody even more, I invite all the different producers of the devices and will ask them about frequency, about the device, what it does, and what the main purpose is. And today, I thought we'll start with our top leading medical device, the PMT-100, and I've invited Michael Davis to us to explain his device. Hello, Michael. I'm really happy to have you here. Hi, thank you. Michael, you've been working with, uh, well, I know you from the PMT-100, but you seem to have a big passion for energy devices. Or energy I, I medicine. do. It goes back probably about 30 years. I own, I, I own many different frequency medicine devices, everything from a Lachowski multiwave oscillator to a big Tesla coil, a Doug coil machine, uh, five Rife machines, including two plasma Rife machines, uh, four different Skinars, uh, frequency-specific microcurrent devices, and my device that I manufacture is not a frequency medicine device. Okay. So what is it? It is an impulse. It's a magnetic impulse generator. There are two cut Dif distinctly different kinds of pulse magnetic therapy devices. By the classic definition of pulse magnetic therapy, any changing waveform that passes through zero magnetism is a pulse magnetic device. Yeah. For instance, a, a um, what, what's the word I want? A diathermy machine is a PEMF device. Because a diathermy machine is radio frequency that oscillates positive through zero, negative through zero, positive. So classically, it is a PEMF device. Okay. I exhibit at Medica, the world's largest medical trade show every year in Dusseldorf, Germany. Yeah. There are about five manufacturers worldwide that exhibit there making machines very similar to mine. There are about 70 or 80. 80 manufacturers exhibiting there making low-power pulse magnetic therapy devices. Almost all of the low-power devices are oscillating devices. They are sinusoidal or trapezoidal or square wave, but they are a repetitive, continuous oscillating waveform passing through zero. Yes. So they are EMF devices, and all of those are frequency medicine devices because all of those oscillate at some point specific frequency. The, the five high power device manufacturers there, they are, not, they are not what you would call hummers. They are not continuously oscillating waveform. They are what you would call ringers. They strike with one impulse, then there's a lot of blank space with nothing, and then they strike with one impulse and there's a lot of blank space with nothing. That's not a frequency medicine device. There, here's, here's the thing. If you take a tuning fork and ring it and you hold it up near another tuning fork of the same frequency, it will make that tuning fork next to it start vibrating. Yeah, certainly. That's but if you continuous hold it up vibration. Fork, but if you hold it near something else that has a different frequency, it won't do anything. For instance, if you hold a tuning fork up next to a bell, it'll do nothing. But if you strike the bell, the bell will ring. Yeah. So the type of device I manufacture strikes the bell. It strikes the, the tissue of the body with a huge short-lived impulse of magnetism, and then there's a ton of blank space before the next impulse. So the, a, a ringer like my device, no matter the normal oscillative frequency of the device, of, of the energy, like the tissue is striking, will, will activate it. Where if you hold a tuning fork up next to the body, it does nothing. Okay, now I had about four of those big devices to test in the clinic and um, the pub EMI that we all know, the PMT-100 and another one which I won't mention now because I'm not going to say uh, something really positive, but it, we had 
all those devices and we did with yep. probably about 20 patients tests and yep. before and after blood test uh, infusion uptake like really everything and not all devices do the same thing so it must still be a different frequency or a different kind of vibration that then causes one device to generate that uptake and the others not it's about the amount of energy see like a papimi device I, i've known dr panos papas for 30 years a papimi device is similar to my device it it, it no matter what energy, what type of tissue it comes up against, it will activate the tissue because it has this impulse, and then it has blank space like mine, then another impulse. Exactly. So pap your your <laughs> device and the PAPIMI device did the same thing, and they had the same yep. technical results in the clinic as yep. we had. Exactly. I would expect that. The, the PAPIMI is a good device medically. It's just uh, not a good device service-wise. It breaks a lot. But yeah. medically, it, it, medically, it's a good device. Oh, it's perfect, but it's also very expensive. And very big and very old-fashioned. It's a 30-year-old <laughs> design at this point. Yeah, that's right. Okay, technically, do you know what slew rate is? Slew rate is the rate of change of energy. You have to have a very steep rate of change of energy. That's why the Rife machines favor a square wave. It has a very quick rate of change. If you don't have a low enough resistance in the coil or a high enough energy capacitor, the rate of change is not enough. Let's just go back to what you said before, which means you are sending a very strong magnetic pulse and all cells will take that up. Healthy cells will recharge and deflate the additional or surcharge energy onto the next cells and through that, the whole body recharges, even if you hold it just in one place, like the whole body recharges. I'm, I'm not sure that the concept of recharging is accurate for any of these machines. If you do, well, I have a research assistant and she, she compiled a 24 page white paper of what everybody agrees pulse magnetic therapy does. The main thing that pulse magnetic therapy does, if it's powerful enough, is it opens ion channels between the inside and the outside of the cells. It actually opens the cell membrane permeability. So what happens if the cells can breathe better, the normal intracellular fluid flow improves, and that becomes a catalyst for no all the normal bodily chemical reactions that happen. So basically by helping the cells to breathe, and oxygen in and nutrients in and waste products out and carbon dioxide out, the cells become healthier. The, 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 the description that Dr. Rao gave in our video of the membrane potential with inside positive, outside negative, and through that membrane potential, through that difference between inside and outside, that would be like in a normal cell, 80 millivolt, and in a deflated or a less activated cell, it would be less... So you attribute that discrepancy between inside and outside to the membrane permeability through the little receptor sites on the cell that they can exchange and, and let's say, breathe and exha uh, exhale a lot better. Right, right. There's been over 2,800 real clinical trials done in post-magnetic therapy before. The ones that state conclusions in their clinical trials most of them say that the improved chemical reactions in the body are one of the main positive attributes of pulse magnetic therapy. Okay. Not, they don't, they don't necessarily, I'm not saying that there's not an energy transfer. I'm not saying that these devices don't improve the actual energy of the cells, but I believe that the main thing is, is the better improved intracellular fluid flow allows the body to heal the body. Well, let's say it that way. We, we hold the device or you can sit on the device for five minutes and after five minutes you taste the blood and it's fully recharged. And I, I stick to my word because I got used to it, to recharge, okay. but it is... It's define, define recharge. How do you measure or look at recharged? Well, if you look at the blood before and after and you look at the red blood cells, oxygen uptake, it's dramatically improved. And we've done okay. that with new patients that walk through the door. We do the test before, 
And then we do okay. the test after PMF and their, and their I, cell membrane I believe potential. that that's true. But, but I, I believe that that's true, that the oxygen level improves. But I believe it's so for a different reason. If you look at hemoglobin, hemoglobin is the ingredient that does the carbon dioxide oxygen transfer. Hemoglobin travels around in the body of clumps of 200, 300, 400. Yeah. The pulse magnetic therapy actually mechanically shakes and agitates all the cells in the body, including the hemoglobin clumps. And it unclumps the hemoglobin and breaks them down to where they're now traveling around in groups of 20 to 50. What this does is it exposes dramatically more surface area so the hemoglobin can do its job better. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so, well, yes, makes sense. Yes, the oxygen level improves, but I believe it's because the hemoglobin has been broken down into smaller groups so the improved surface area allows it to pick up and more oxygen and deposit more carbon dioxide. Okay, and in regards to white blood cell, about increase in size to about double, sometimes triple the size of the white blood cells with a lot stronger visible um, um, nuclei and, and full-on mobile and activated, whereas before, frozen, stagnant, still not moving, and highly compressed. Okay, so for sure, pulse magnetic therapy mechanically agitates things. There's no doubt about that. And, and in the mechanical agitation, the, those, the white blood cells, again, their, their cell membrane permeability improves, and they can, they can uh, transfer and hold more fluids. So I believe uh, my academic background is physics, not medical. So I tend to look at things from a physical viewpoint. And I'm not diminishing all the other different viewpoints. I'm saying that I believe there's a lot of the physical activity at the cellular level of these high-power machines is one of the reasons that they work. Okay. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I think nobody can really crawl in there and see exactly what happens. So it's all a right. kind of hypothesis. And we're finding right. that it works. Like... There, there is another factor to it. Like we have in all clinics, we have both devices. Like we have the strong ones, the, the pulse magnetic oh. devices, and then the frequency huh? devices. Now, right. they're used also for different purpose. When you look at exactly. um, activity or um, the, for example, in, in the cancer clinics, they use it to destroy cancer cells very specifically with the Papimi, with the PMT-100 directly on the area of the cancer and through that extreme uh, bombardment, as I call it, with those magnetic waves, the cancer tumor disintegrates a lot easier. And in combination with other treatments, the uptake of nutrients of any kind right. of natural anti-cancer treatments is increased. Right. Okay, I believe that's true. But remember, cancer is an anaerobic situation. Cancer thrives in the absence of oxygen, and you and I are just the opposite. We thrive in the presence of oxygen. So if you can improve the cell membrane permeability and more oxygen can get into the cells, the body becomes a less hospitable host for the cancer just because, as you've noticed, the improved oxygen level in the body. I, I believe that the improved oxygen level is one of the main reasons that this is an... Uh, uh, not conducive to cancer. It helps the body get rid of cancer. Okay. But we get that increased oxygen uptake also from the, um, like, Curatron, you know, the, the, the frequency devices, the frequency magnetic devices. So yeah. what is the difference then in using the strong magnetic device compared to those rather low power? Okay. People ask me that question at least, 200 times a year. They say, <laughs> if you were going to buy a pulse magnetic therapy device, which is better, the high power ones that, ha that, 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 that are the ringers, the strikers, or the lower power ones that are the oscillators? And my answer is always the same. My answer is both. Yeah. They do different <laughs> things and they behave differently in the body. That's exactly I, why clinics always have both and patients use one to deal with exactly. infections a lot better, to boost the immune system, right. and the other one right. is used as a real... Right. I believe that the low-power oscillating machines, high PEMF machines, are better at body balancing, better at background health than my device. I believe that my device is better for more traumatic situations, for pain, for range of motion. 
So I believe that both of them are necessary and both of them do different things. And in concert, the two kinds can do better than either kind can by itself. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's the experience that we find in clinics. But for people at home, these devices are very expensive. And it's always the question, which one? And we've been selling many, many Curatron devices and they have been very, very successful. But um, in clinics, they still rely very much on those high power devices to actually okay. weaken the tumor so that the, that the effects of healing are more efficient or more faster in those three weeks that are available. You need to get really everything going that's possible. Now that brings me to my next question. <laughs> Sorry, I keep, keep asking. <laughs> The low frequencies, which we have in the area, like really starting from zero all the way up to about 60 hertz. I think 50 hertz is, is the maximum of um, uh, frequencies that, that generate health, that, that promote health. But as soon as we move right. up into 50, 60 and up to 100 um, or, or 400,000 hertz, that's the destructive. That's what we know from mobile phones. That's what we know from radio waves they are actually destroying cells. So the higher frequencies are always designed to destroy cells, whereas the lower frequencies promote health. That seems to be the consensus, yes. So that means the magnetic pulse devices will always stay within that low range, sending out enhancing, growing and, and promoting, cell promoting frequencies and you stay completely out of that range of high frequencies that uh, cause cell death. Exactly.